These guys bring back so many memories of when I was growing up. Uh, this is a collection of eight different Simpich Lantern Men. There may be another design that was somewhere uh, in this lineup, uh, but these are the ones that I could think of and that we had on hand to show you today. This is the very first one. This is the original Simpich Lantern Man that my parents produced in 1952 for uh, my dad's parents. Classic sculpted head, a mold wasn't really made for this. Uh, classic all the way around. Now um, he has some discoloration in the way uh, his face looks that's happened over the years because of the kind of plastic clay that they used. Uh, but this was the beginning. Uh, I have to say, not really a leading man, sort of an uncle lantern man maybe, but uh, the leading man was soon to come. Uh, this one was produced. Now, the clue that kind of helps me line these up in chronological order are the, uh, the stands. And here we have a sticker pasted on the bottom of the stand that shows that he was produced by my parents during the, uh, the 1950s. And it could have gone up into maybe the early 60s. They used this sticker on the bottom of the stand. And that's the clue, really, that helps um, identify the time it was made. Uh, a little more of a, of a leading man. Definitely a serious tenor. Uh, great guy. Uh, there, there are there. You can see from the from the original to this one a little more sophistication, a little more height in the style. Uh, they've adapted the lantern. I have a story to tell about the lanterns when I was growing up. Um, you know, the doll studio was studio was in our home, and uh, just right really right outside my bedroom door. And you know, I would come out, and then either my dad or my brother would have a whole lot of lantern men more than than's right here lined up on the 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 table where they where they put them together and and finished them and i would hear my dad or my brother uh, tacking their feet into the bases you know it was four boom 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 four uh taps of the hammer to get their uh with each nail to get their feet into the stands and also a memory i have is uh, these lanterns being painted my sister Gretchen is seven years older than me, and when we were growing up together on a Saturday, I would always want to get her to, to play. But she had her job to do, and that was to paint the lanterns. And she'd have a whole rack of these, and she had to paint the, uh, the yellow, and then she'd have to paint the orange, and I would think, oh, she's almost done. But actually, she was just getting started, because then she'd have to go back with a small brush and do all the black for the actual metal lantern part and then then with the dry brush she would paint the uh, the little uh, uh, fog or not the fog the uh, the the black on the uh, the soot perhaps on the actual lantern so many many hours of work when I was a little bit older my job was to uh, to sticker the uh, or paste the the stickers on the bottom of the stand so I had a job too but many Saturday mornings watching my sister paint the lanterns so uh, the next in line is this very wonderful vintage guy. Now I think he was produced before I was born or maybe right around the time in the early 60s. Actually my wife and I have purchased him. Uh, I had to do some repairs and we want to collect a vintage set of Simpich Carolers. And we think he's just classic. And uh, again produced before I was born uh, maybe till 63 or so, not absolutely sure, but the, the sticker again is the, uh, the clue there of when he was produced. See, he's more of a leading man coming into his own here. Uh, I could definitely tell my dad painted the eyes on this one. Uh, he would come home from working for a District 11, sit at his desk and, and do uh, little blue dots and, on a whole rack of heads and I can just tell by the way those eyes look that he did those eyes. Uh, both my parents with the vintage Simpich dolls, they actually had their hands on them, not only in designing them, in, in, in uh, you know, making the duplicates. 
And uh, so I can tell my dad's eyes. I can oftentimes tell when my mother has painted eyes. And of course, when she sewed the clothes. So one of the, the great values of the vintage dolls is that my parents, who were the artists, had their hands in creating them. And so we're excited about getting a vintage set. Now, after this gentleman, we have the one that I, I think I really kind of grew up with, with this one. Uh, through my uh, elementary, junior high years, this was the Lantern Man. Very much a leading man. Wonderful. Uh, I think there was a point that my mother said, Bob, you need to try to make him more handsome. So uh, he thought, okay, I'll go for more of a handsome uh, leading man, lantern man type. And this guy was maybe the, uh, the mid 70s till the, maybe the very early 80s. And I used to work on this particular piece uh, in when I worked in the painting room here at the Simpich workshop. And I remember uh, this uh, whole rack of, of, of his head and I would, uh, would paint the eyes and, and he had very, th you can't really tell, but he had a very thick neck. Leading man here. Now, some things really changed in the, uh, the early 80s. I think my dad was kind of like, I'm always doing this, sculpting this round mouth for this guy. I'd like to do something different. So here we have the humming lantern man. He wasn't produced for very long, uh, but his mouth is shut. It's a great head, but he is not singing. He's, you know, uh, he doesn't know the words. Also, something very different about him is they have abandoned the hand-painted uh, cast lantern for a, um, a lantern that uh, is cast in resin and you can actually see inside. They, they worked out a little glowing sort of lantern candle inside and then uh, these had to be painstakingly uh, uh, painted also. But that was a new step because it actually looks like, like glass. So they were very excited about that. But if, if you or someone you know owns a lantern with a lantern man with a, with a closed mouth it didn't last for long. I think there was a demand for uh, the singing gentleman. So uh, just in like 1983, my dad did this very boisterous singer. So he's back singing again. And this was produced for, uh, well, during the 80s. This was the main, the main lantern man. Again, the, the, uh, the resin uh, lantern in his hand. So he, he, uh, he carried us through the, the 1980s. And finally, the very last Lantern Man has a tooth, some teeth in the front. I think my dad thought, well, maybe, maybe if I give him a tooth uh, or some teeth, it will uh, kind of break that, that round O look that I think kind of challenged him and perhaps frustrated him. I think the fact that there's so many versions shows that he was always a little restless, a little uh, seeking another design to try to fulfill his, his, his idea, or actually both my parents' idea of the, uh, the ultimate leading man, lantern man, because he, he's courting the muff lady. And uh, very handsome. And this, this version carried the lantern man to the end of the, uh, of the enterprise in 2007. Uh, I have another copy of him or another. And this guy uh, needs some repair. I actually did some repair on a lot of these uh, to present them to you today. But uh, his, his lantern, was positioned in a way where every time you would maybe lift him up out of a box or move him around on a fireplace mantle, his lantern would hit his face. And this is a, a very dangerous thing for these lantern men uh, because I've seen many noses knocked off. And this guy has a, a chipped lip and a chipped sideburn from the lantern uh, swinging against his face. So if you have a lantern man, and uh, you are concerned about his safety, 
Uh, you can maybe bring him to us and we will reposition him or just be very, very careful that the, the lantern doesn't swing and hit his face. Many, many uh, nose jobs, more than in Hollywood, have been accomplished for the poor lantern man uh, losing his nose uh, from his lantern. Uh, so that was actually a very brief history of, uh, of the, the Simpich Lantern Men. And I have to say, I'm not absolutely sure that I've shown them all to you. Uh, there could be another one that if, if it were to come into our workshop uh, to have us consign, I would go, oh yeah, of course, that one. Uh, but these are kind of the main uh, representatives for uh, the, uh, the history through the years. And, uh, but I would love to, you know, I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another one out there because, again, my dad was always seeking um, another uh, idea to communicate this wonderful character for uh, the, the Simpich Caroler set. So a classic guy, and like I said, he sure brings back memories.